So once you have figured out that this is the strategy that you want to go ahead with, how do you convince your stakeholders or your management to, or some like what are some of the challenges that you face on a day? Right. So this it's a fairly standard uh, way of convincing stakeholders. Um, with respect to gamification, I don't think it's that different for gamification, although it is different in some ways. Um, you look at it like, how do I convince my stakeholders to offer me support on pretty much any new initiative, first of all. There is a fairly standard way to go about it. For example, you make sure that the problem that you are trying to solve is openly acknowledged by everyone, including those on the stakeholder committee or the group. So as we uh, discussed so far, if adoption gaps are obvious to you, they should be obvious to them also. There should be no difference on this. Uh, because once the problem has been acknowledged, people are now ready to explore solutions. Until then, if directly someone presents something as a solution, there is not enough appreciation for what is it being told to me for. Hmm. So first I need to know the problem. If I am one of the stakeholders, I need to know the problem and I need to acknowledge that this is serious enough that I am willing to explore multiple approaches. First. Second, you obviously start listing out all the different solutions and you go one by one, including those that you have already tried and what kind of success they have given you so far. Right? What's the quantum of success you have you have received from each of those techniques and then of course you bring up gamification as one of the ways that you are yet to explore because as we discussed it's a way to tap into motivations and solve some pretty deep-seated problems that uh, technologies like notifications are not in a place to solve without demeaning their importance mm -hmm. it's just a different problem altogether that's all i'm saying so here you talk to your stakeholders about this point that we have tried several technologies and several approaches, but we do believe that the problem is deeper than what we thought initially. And it may have to do with the equation between human beings and a piece of technology. Mm. Right? right? And we might, we might need to tap into the, the motivations of these end users whether it is extrinsic or intrinsic and that is the way we create hunger inside them to use this app we cannot push them we have tried and it goes only so far mm. so this is the way you slowly bring up the case for trying to motivate end users as opposed to notifying them right. and this sets the stage for you to then talk about how this technique has helped other companies right we've already discussed some great examples you can dig up gamification case studies. There are so many of them out there in the, on the internet. Uh, Google Pay, uh, Cred, uh, Strava, the app for athletes and runners. It has done wonders with gamification. Then from the world of language learning comes Duolingo. Oh, right. yeah. Yeah. Extraordinary success it has had through yeah. gamification. Yeah. So these are not trivial examples. These are really power-packed examples and entire case studies in their own right. Right? You bring this to the notice of the stakeholders and tell them that we are not shooting in the dark. This has been tried and it has given brilliant results to companies that have done it in a, in a certain thoughtful way. Mm -hmm. So you kind of soothe their nerves that this is not some pie in the sky that I'm talking about, but it is, it is uh, well supported by the results out there. And finally, you tell them that Provided this thing has been done so far, whatever we have talked about so far, if it has been done well, then the stakeholders are now at least curious, okay, how do we do this? And that's where uh, one of the points I mentioned earlier, start small. You tell them the technology is available already. We don't need to build it. Expertise is available already. We don't need to hire it. Yeah. Let's find the right partner and let's begin discussing with the express intention of how do we start small and how do we build confidence and then go on to bigger and bolder 
experiments in gamification. I think these five steps, if somebody executes, certainly the case would be heard and it would be encouraged. So I'm just curious, I mean, have you ever in this five years ever faced any backlash from the stakeholders' point of view in terms of like this is not the right step to go or like anything that is very common among stakeholders? Yes, because the, some, of, some of the times um, I have seen a certain resistance mm. to some of the visual forms that we suggest. For example, we say use badges and they might not be okay with that. Yeah. Right? But the beauty of gamification is not badges, mm. not points, not leaderboards. The famous acronym PBL, points, mm. badges and leaderboards. That's not gamification. Those are some of the ways gamification shows up in, in common uh, experience. So we immediately take a back seat and we, we, we take a step back and we talk to those people and we tell them, let me tell you the reason for badges or the reason for reward points or the reason for this or that. If you're okay with the reason, we can always come back to the visual. Right. right? And the reasons are always wonderful, motivating people, right? When, when is it out of style? When is it out of fashion? It's always in fashion, right? So it's, I think uh, it's the whole uh, discussion has to be structured in such a way that even if they disagree with uh, how certain things look like, they still find agreement on the core principles and move on from that point onwards. Right, right, right. So suppose for serious businesses who are, suppose for example, banking apps, you know, are they like a little bit more hesitant towards implementing gamification or is it like, is, does that come also into a point of view that they don't want to have that kind of a game-based element aspect to their apps? Yeah, I would say that some of them are concerned yeah. uh, about that kind of a pretty overt approach. Mm. So yeah, I, I would I would certainly say that they are concerned. 